My life has moved in the fly fishing direction because it's a thing of beauty to see and feel. It's not anything unnatural once you start to use your body, shift your weight, feel that acceleration. When we fish, we have obstacles. We have wind, we have trees, we have long side of the stream, so you have to cast backhand as well as forehand. You have to be aware of how your fly floats on the water and where the line is and how much slack there is. You have to become familiar with all the components. Then you can start to do some of the more intricate techniques. After you've made your effort, now you get to watch that line unroll. So you have those few seconds while it's going out to enjoy it as well as hope it goes where you want it to go. And I've often thought a singer must feel that way when they hold a note, <laughs> you know, that it goes on and on and on. Fishing it completely captures me. Growing up in New Jersey, Joan Salvato was the girl who fishes. Though competitive casting was big in the 1930s, few females were interested. But Joan was, and her father Jimmy encouraged her. By the age of 12, Joan had not only won her first title and caught her first trout on fly, she was also teaching tap dancing. And at 16, she won the first of 17 national titles she would capture between 1943 and 1960. In 1944, Joan and her former teacher opened a dance school. Not yet 18, she was earning $150 a week for three days' work and traveling to tournaments. At 21, she defeated professionals and amateurs of both sexes to win a baitcasting title in London. In 1951, with a cast of 131 feet against all-male competition, she became the first woman in history to win the Fisherman's Distance event. Joan Salvato was determined to make angling her career. She became an audience favorite at shows, trick casting in evening gowns and high heels. In 1959, she signed with Garcia Corporation, the first woman offered a salaried contract by a tackle manufacturer. Joan stopped competing in 1960, but not before making an astounding 161-foot cast, a new woman's record at one of her last events. In 1966, Garcia sent her to Newfoundland to fish for bluefin with Lee Wolf. Lee was living the life Joan dreamed about. They married and for 25 years were America's most famous fishing couple. At shows, club dinners and clinics, Lee talked about conservation and Joan demonstrated casting with the fly -o, a practice rod invented by Lee. When Joan was scheduled, men brought their wives and women soon realized they too could fly fish. In 1979, the Joan and Lee Wolf Fishing School opened its doors. Joan is devoted to teaching, and the school has become a world-renowned institution. She began writing a monthly column, a first for any writer in outdoor life in 1980, and beginning in 1981, 22 years of columns for Rod and Reel. Joan began preparing for her first book by dissecting her own cast, the movement of hands, arms, and line. She had no vocabulary to work with, so she created one. It took two years, but when flycasting techniques appeared in 1987 with Joan's pioneering lexicon and set of mechanics, it was the very first book to explain casting factually, and it garnered rave reviews. Though she's regularly celebrated for her promotion of fly fishing to women, Joan is an inspiration to all anglers. A combination of mastery, grace, enthusiasm, and devotion to the sport that captivated her so many years ago. The IGFA is delighted to honor Joan Salvato Wolf, a woman who was born to fly cast and to teach others how.